stop, Watch stop, that forward stop, beam. Stop, stop, stop. Not happy with that forward She's beam. Just the Wave Rover 650, a design based on my single-handed ocean voyages. She's small, light, but easy to build and strong enough to cross any ocean. My name's Alan Mulholland and this is the Wave Rover Story. Well, Rovers, it has been a fantastic week. We've accomplished two major undertakings. The skag and the keels are now permanently attached to Wave Rover. And Mrs. Rover said, nothing can stop us now. So this is a new perspective. Um, we're jacked up on Wave Rover. As in, we've jacked her up a couple of feet. And the reason for that is because I want to get the skag in. So we're going to drill a couple of holes, make a couple of saw cuts, and then see where we stand. Well, thankfully, Wave Rover is waterproof uh, because the weather is raining and has been raining for quite some time now. And we have some jobs that we've, well, we need sunshine to complete. Let me just show you. This side of the hull has all been prepped and fixed up and we need to get some paint on it. That's one job. It's supposed to get sunny for a period later this afternoon and that should really do the trick. But this is the other job that I'm keen to finish. I have tacked the skag in place. Uh, we could probably take those supports off now. The boat has been jacked up a couple of feet. Next job is to create some massive structural fillets either side and then uh, get some fiberglass on that. But we need the weather to dry up before we can do that. Well, Rovers, we're in between showers right now, but we're going to use this time to fix the skag permanently, which means great big fillets and then lots of fiberglass. I have prepped the area. I have sanded the area. I've marked it. I've uh, washed it down with acetone, and I've also made this really cool little filleting tool. This, this is two and three quarter inches in diameter. Why two and three quarter inches and not three inches? And that's because it was a scrap piece of plywood that was two and three quarters. So uh, that, that'll give me a really healthy fillet that will then fiberglass over. Meanwhile, back in the hovel, the glue up room, Mrs. Rover has been busy and she has been cutting fiberglass for us and she's setting them up right here. So what we're doing is we're having a piece of poly and that's just for transport. And then we have some peel ply 
Then we have some 10 ounce uh, fiberglass cloth. And then on top of that, just setting it up here, we've got 18 ounce biaxle. So this is all going to be wetted out when we're ready to go. And then it'll be transported on the poly into place and then pressed up against the fillet. Now, this is sort of uh, an idea that I've, I've, you know, sort of been working on. I don't know how effective it'll be. It should work. Uh, we're going to find out very quickly. Okay, so we have the poly down and this is the 18 ounce by axle and it's almost wetted out. You know it's wetted out when you, it becomes translucent. By translucent, just take a look at that, see how silvery that is? That's, that's not wetted out, but this now, you see it, you can see right through it, and that's what we're looking for. Okay, so that's phase one. Now, I have everything in order, so... This should be an inch bigger on each side. There we go. We'll wet it out. And the reason I'm trying this because I have tried to wet out or I've wet it out by axle before and try to place it in position over my head and it just <laughs> it sags it changes shape it's really difficult to work with so to the point that the epoxy ended up running down my wrists and causing uh, little burns on my wrists so I'm determined to do it a better way this time Okay, so you can see the peel ply, which is right here. It's all translucent, so we're ready to go. It's windy outside, which is going to add another layer of challenge to this. pretty good all in all. What we're looking for are little uh, air pockets, but you know, we've done a pretty good job under pretty tough conditions. Okay, so this is what the skag looks like from the inside, and it is strong. I mean, this fillet right here comes up an inch and a half, and then it has the 18 ounce biaxle and 10 ounce cloth over top of it on each side and the back on each side. So, and of course it has the same underneath the boat. So we're talking with the three quarter inch uh, hull bottom, we have a total of three and three quarter inches of support at that point, plus the support at the back. So it's incredibly rigid, but is it rigid enough? Well, we're going to make it just a little tougher. So this is the final reinforcement of the skeg. Uh, you can see we've I've uh, put in these lateral pieces here. They're three quarters of an inch, and they've been fiberglassed and filleted in place. So I'd say she's pretty strong. So what are we doing this morning, Alan? Well, just got a call from my friend Nelson, a very helpful local farmer, and he's coming with his tractor, and we're going to jack the boat up. We're going to get the boat up uh, a good five feet off the ground because tomorrow, tomorrow 
The keels are arriving all the way from Montague, Prince Edward Island, and we should be attaching them. Big, big progress is planned. A lot to do, time to crack on. Just, oh, love that smell of, uh, you know, softwood lumber when you cut it. Just terrific aroma. So how many laminations for this beam, Alan? Well, we're going to do three, which is going to be absolutely overkill for carrying the weight of half a wave rover. Interesting story. First off, this great big piece of uh, spruce here, this was, this came from the professor's wood lot and he's, he builds these sawmills and he cut this up and just brought it up on one trip. It's, uh, it's nice and stout. Then this, these two by sixes, I didn't go out and buy them. These are left over from the project I did a year ago, which was the house. So these were used for the footing of the house pretty much 12 months ago. That's where we were. We were building a house, making footings for the house. And you can see the concrete residue on these. And so when I stripped the footings, um, you know, I just put these in a shed. Great, uh, great use for them right now. Anyway, the tractor is arriving in about an hour and we have to have these two beams built, ready to rock and roll. It's not too heavy uh, and that'll certainly carry the weight of the wave rover. So this, this probably was the more difficult of the two beams to make on account of the wood was quite twisted. Sign a waiver? I don't know about any waiver there, Nelson, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard of the song there, Friends with Tractors. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great one. Wrong, so somebody's gonna have to tell me. Jerry, which, Jerry and I will. Which way to tip them or? Okay, so watch me, I'll, I'll give you. Yep. Okay. Up and down, or the whole thing. So up. the whole thing won't go forward. Well, that's, we, if we lift straight up. So Jerry, uh, I'll put the padding on. I'll take the big one to the floor on that side. So the padding gets in. Yeah, we're, we only need him to get under here about six or eight inches. Oh, six or eight inches, that's all? Not, not far. Yeah. So. That beam, that laminated beam right there is going to be going underneath. So which side? Uh, uh, it's going to be on um, this here side here. We need to give it a good scrape for the, the center area here. If you want to just flip it up. And we'll just give it a quick scrape with that. Oh, yes. Just the center section is one of these parts that's going to be on the hull here. Look at the pipes in this guy. He's 70 years old. Well, it's all that good living. It's, yeah, exactly. Good homesteader should be at this garden. Somehow he's weaponized the phrase homesteader. I'll come back to it. Right to the edge of the 
Watch the skag. Yeah, it's about three inches for the skeg. So now we should be safe to go to the next run. We get to three and a half feet. Stopping. We need two and a half for the for the heel, and we need a foot for the trailer. So three and a four, three and a half to four feet. That's that's all we need. And we're doing this nice and slow. And. Some Keep of the best neighbors you could ever ask for. And of course your good self coming all the way from New Brunswick. Thank you very much. No worries. Watch that forward B. Not happy with that forward She's B. She's twisting. Might just get by on the next one. How do you feel it's going, Alan? <laughs> well, you know, after we got through the initial um, sort of pain of the beams twisting, and I think we've got it solved. Uh, not bad. Great bunch of guys to work with. Awesome. Well, I have to say that was that was exciting that was pretty much as exciting as when we rolled the boat over so many months ago um, great bunch of guys helping not everything uh, went to plan so we had to adapt the plan as we went along but overall the adapted plan got us here it's high enough to get the keels on we may have to make a few adjustments when the uh, when the keels arrive we may have to just jack it up a little higher in the front, but we're in good position and if everything goes well, the keels arrive tomorrow morning. It's setting off already. All right, now that uh, Wave Rover set up to its decent height, uh, Stephen's got the micro bubbles and epoxy mixture set up and beautiful day. And uh, he's filling those little tiny pinholes. You can see they're, they're tiny in the weave. Uh, it's nice and visible, but we actually have fairly good temperatures today and uh, this stuff is setting off really fast.
Meanwhile, I'm just going to um, grab some more of our dunnage, uh, cut it into blocking, and then reinforce this stack right here just to make the boat a little more stable in case we get high winds overnight. The fun just never really ends here at Rover's Rest. How goes the keel insulation, Alan? Well, you know, slow and steady. These things are heavy. We're um, operating at sort of not optimal angles, but we have we have the outside holes drilled and they're drilled straight and they go exactly through the wooden beams, the white oak beams on the inside. So we're pretty good in that respect. Uh, so I'll just finish drilling these holes and then we're ready to do a test fit. Excellent. Time to crack on. <laughs> so Alan, I think we're getting your boat just built in time. Gonna get about three inches of rain. The great flood could be coming. Yeah. Since we got here and it's not working so, very well. So we'll pivot them up and when we get them up, we're going to have a big gap. So I've got some long bolts, they're just temporary, and we'll just get those in and that'll take some of the weight. Then I've got to lower the boat front and aft, it'll be kind of like this as we get down. Hopefully the holes line up, we're going to find out at that point. <laughs> they should be close, close enough that we can shift, you know, it might be shifting the keel forward a quarter inch or in Those are words, inch. like when Marilyn gives me directions, he says, I think, and it might be. Yeah, I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we've done our best to get the holes accurate. <laughs> and then when we get the boat down so it's about an inch above the flange, and we're confident it's going to go the rest of the way, then I have to get the caulking out and get the caulking spread over the flange, each one. So a little gap, get that on there. Once I start the caulking, we only have 20 minutes before the caulking sets up. So, uh, so, we, so we've got to move fast and what, what I think I'll be doing is I'll be squeezing it in there. We'll get someone else on a, on a little shim or something to help spread it out and then collapse it down. We want to use as much caulking as possible because it's an adhesive as well so that we get plenty of squeeze out. Sounds wasteful, but it's a one time yeah, only thing. Don't want some yeah, and so so I'm going to I'm going to get you guys on the keels. I'm going to be sort of on the bolts because I'll have to jump inside the boat then and put the uh, nuts and washers on it. Uh, yeah. So that's that's the deal. Uh, be, we want to be careful. <laughs> so if it's if the keels are going to you know if you feel for whatever reason you can't hold it up, uh, don't put your hand on the flange. Let it fall in for the fear of. Uh, Best thing is just to clear off. Th that, that's, those supports are strong enough. Everything's strong enough to support the boat. All right. So, so take, take a little bit of it, just a tiny bit, and Jerry, you push. Okay. Okay. Well, close. We're close. Another uh, three quarters of an inch. Okay. Don't worry. Any injuries will be compensated from workers' comp. There you go. Yep. Just wait for the key. Uh, we're we're the there's an I in team team. Oh. <laughs> have to pivot out. It has to pivot. Okay, so, so you hang on to that the point there, Darren. Don't let yeah, that fall. So it's got to come out to on the bottom to no, uh, no, 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 in. 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 Oh, it's go in okay, a couple inches. So. Okay, I'm gonna have to get in beside. Get, get down. Here. All right, Jerry's. Oh, oh, no. Jerry's he's, getting inside. He's got. He's doing great. No, but he give him a hand there. Okay. Okay, she's got a little bit. More. When you do that, it's cut. It's uh. It's, it's twisting yours. Forward well, we'll we'll get the fore and aft, yeah, and then we'll come okay. back. Push your end. Your bill is right. 
Yeah, I'm good, buddy. Yes. Yeah, you need to go in. Go in. There. There. Okay, cheers. When we say little bit, we mean little bit. Yeah. Okay. You know, they use the straight blade around the ears. Yeah. And how long did it take them? Oh, not long. What's what do the textbooks say about torque on these? <laughs> Well, the sun is definitely shining on Wave Rover right now. Now, this coming week, I hope to not only get a little bit of paint on the exterior of the boat, but also I'd like to get stuck into the inside. So I'm looking forward to showing you how I plan to uh, lay that out. Now, it's going to be very simple, of course, because, well, simplicity is our byword here at Rover Nation. As always, Rovers, thanks for watching and Forge your own adventure. Well, the Wave Rover patrons, with their pledges of support, really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. <laughs>